It's 530 on your Thursday Central Time. Welcome back to News for All America. And developing this morning, an Indiana judge has unsealed more than 100 documents related to the Delphi murders case. And in those documents, investigators reveal Richard Allen reportedly confessed to killing 14-year-old Libby German and 13-year-old Abby Williams several times at least five times during recorded prison phone calls to his wife and also his mom. For more on this, we bring in News Nation legal contributor and Law and Crime Network reporter Jesse Weber. Um, Jesse, always good to see you. Uh, I'm excited to get into this because this has captivated the country. This Indiana judge released 118 court documents online, only kept 19 of them sealed. And I read one of the motions in these documents saying investigators transcribed the phone call he had with his wife and mom confirmed that he admitted to telling her he had killed the girls. Um, it says his wife, Kathy Allen, ends the phone abruptly. Is this the nail in the coffin for him, Jesse? Assuming this is a confession, because this is the prosecutor's take, I'm going to assume it is. This is a dream for prosecutors. I actually tried to think, Mark, I went back and I looked at cases where uh, defendants have confessed and that information was presented to a jury I couldn't recall one instance where they weren't convicted. That's how important this kind of evidence is. Now, what is the defense saying? The defense in their filings is saying, well, you, you can't believe what Richard Allen said to his wife or to his mother or the multiple times that he confessed because he has been mentally and physically deteriorating in jail and his confession is unreliable. He doesn't know what he's saying. The problem for him is, is what prosecutors responded with. They said all this erratic behavior, him actually eating papers, that yes. were given to him by his attorneys, that all came after this phone call. So the idea here is that he's faking it. He realized he shouldn't have confessed over the phone to okay. his wife. Yeah. He made no phone calls after, and that's the problem. Timeline doesn't make sense. And I was going to you know, go into that. Uh, they allege that he's refused food, sleep, yeah. and to your point that he was taking papers from his attorneys, wetting them, and then eating them. Is insanity going to be part of their main you know, strategy here in terms of the defense team? If the evidence is so bad that they can't deny he's the one who did it, that might be their only option. But we have to remember when we talk about the insanity defense, it's not how he is currently. It's not his mental health right now. It was his mental health at the time of the incident. So any kind of indication that he knew what he was doing was illegal and he knew what he was doing was wrong and he was trying to evade law enforcement, that is going to hit against insanity. You have to be in such a condition where you're you're not appreciating what you're doing. And even if he's behaving erratically in jail, that might not be enough to mount an insanity defense. It might have an issue in terms of competency, whether he can stand trial, but it has to be real and he has to be evaluated. And I want to talk to uh, the documents are fascinating. I've been reading these motions since last night. I also want to talk about some of the evidence found at the scene. Alan was linked to the crime by that unspent bullet found there in the woods. Uh, but now investigators detail in these documents that Abby and Libby were killed by a sharp object. Uh, yeah. How do you read this? Does this clarify that the teens were not killed with a gun? Yeah, the way that I see it, based on the evidence that's being presented so far, is, is it seems he threatened them with a gun to get them into a specific area. We know that there was a video recovered from one of the victim's phones where you hear them actually concerned about a gun. He is allegedly saying on this tape to move down the hill. And it seems to us that he might have been threatening them with the weapon and got them in a position to then use a knife uh, to kill them. Now, we know that a number of different items were collected from his home. Defense teams are trying every which way to make sure that evidence does not come into trial. They're suggesting that the, yeah. so there was a, a fault in the search warrant, but that's the way. He used the gun to threaten and used the knife to kill. Okay, yeah, and when you speak about that evidence from his home, dozens, dozens of knives, a handgun, multiple rounds of ammunition, pieces of clothing, the list goes on. And, and the fact that one of those girls had the wherewithal to be filming, you know, while this was happening, um, you know, could really have solved the case here. Uh, Jesse, thank you so much, or, or at least help extensively. Um, Jesse, thanks so much for joining us. We'll be talking soon. Good. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.